platelet count by improved Neubauer chamber. Platelets are the smallest of all blood cells. It is important to monitor platelet count in order to diagnose or screen various medical conditions that may affect the process of blood clotting leading to bleeding. A low count may be because of inadequate production or peripheral destruction of platelets. One of the commonest causes of low platelet counts is viral infections like dengue fever. Monitoring platelets on a continuous basis over the span of the fever and beyond is very vital. Hence, it is important to thoroughly understand the counting process. Cell counters nowadays give a fairly accurate count. However, Platelet counting on cell counters is often flagged due to several reasons which are discussed in the respective section. Thus, it is important that mechanisms like manual counting and assessment of platelets on peripheral smears are understood well and the skills for such obtained. A low platelet count is called thrombocytopenia and a high count thrombocytosis. A count greater than 10 lakhs points towards a neoplastic process in most cases. In adults, the normal platelet count ranges from 1.4 to 4.5 lakhs platelets per microliter of blood. Pediatric ranges are different as shown in the table. You can understand from the table that a platelet count of 1.4 lakhs which is normal for adults is low for children except in neonatals. This should be kept in mind while reporting platelets in children. That is why it is very important to have age-specific biological reference ranges defined on the report formats. One year, it's 2 to 5.50. 2 to 6 years, 2 to 4.90. 6 to 12 years, 1.70 to 4.50. Birth, 1 to 4.50. Day 3, 2.10 to 5. Day 7, 1.60 to 5, day 14, 1.70 to 5, 1 month, 2 to 5, 2 months, 2.10 to 6.50, 3 to 6 months, 2 to 5.50. Sample Whole blood EDTA sample or capillary blood can be used. Blood sample is collected either by finger prick or in a tube with anticoagulant EDTA. It is to be noted that the manual platelet counting is a test very difficult to standardize. The repeatability is very low. If capillary blood is used, this becomes even harder as every drop may be different in its composition from another. For venous blood, ensure the best venipuncture techniques as pre-analytical variables are also very high with bad collection techniques. Equipment and reagents First, hemocytometer Improved Newbar's counting chamber. 2. Compound microscope. Ideally, platelet counts should be done using phase contrast microscopy. However, we are discussing ordinary bright field microscopy here. 3. Cover slips. Cover slips for counting chambers are specially made and are thicker than those for conventional microscopy. They are so designed that the distance between the bottom of the chamber and the cover is 0.1 mm. 4. Pricking apparatus comprising of lancet or pricking needle or syringe needle or evacuated tubes. 5. Spirit swab. 6. Diluting fluids. As the platelet count is in lakhs, it is important to dilute it adequately to enable counting. The platelets are tiny and should be made visible by staining. The fluid also prevents platelet clumping. Thus, it is important to understand the diluent and the dilution for platelet counts. Diluent. There are two kinds of platelet fluids available. Fluids that lyse RBCs so that only platelets are seen on the field. Example, ammonium oxalate. Those that are isotonic to RBCs and will not lyse them. Example, formal citrate. In this case, the platelets are to be counted in between RBCs. If you are using fluids that lyse RBCs, wait for at least 10 minutes so that the RBCs can be lysed before counts are done. Most standard textbooks recommend ammonium oxalate as the preferred diluent as it lyses RBCs. However, the easily available commercial preparations in India are isotonic. Therefore, it is important to understand the counting processes in both. WBCs are less in count so they do not interfere in counting the platelets. 
Let's now see the difference between the formal citrate and 1% ammonium oxalate. Formal citrate. Composition. Trisodium citrate, 3%. NaCl, 1%. Formaldehyde, 1%. Detergent, 1%. Action. Platelets are fixed and RBC lies at a dilution of 1 is to 100. Microscopic appearance. Now, 1% ammonium oxalate. Composition, ammonium oxalate 11.45 grams, phosphate buffer 1 gram. Lysis RBC at any dilution while WBC and platelet are intact. Microscopic appearance. Dilution. The standard dilution for platelet counts is 1 is to 100. However, if the count is low, the 1 is to 100 dilution can be difficult and can create errors. Therefore, if warranted, a 1 is to 20 dilution can be employed. 1 is to 100? Take 1.98 ml of platelet diluting fluid in a tube. Then aspirate 20 microliters blood in pipette and mix it with the diluent. This results in 1 in 100 dilution. For a 1 is to 20 dilution, Take 50 microliters of blood and mix with 950 microliters of diluent solution. This results in 1 in 20 dilution. Wait for 10 to 20 minutes before charging the hemocytometer. Method 1. Prepare the sample dilution as discussed above. 2. Prepare the counting chamber. Meticulously clean the hemocytometer with lint-free paper. This is important because dust particles and other debris can be mistaken for platelets, especially on a light microscope. Allow to dry completely before charging with diluted specimen. 3. Clean the mirror-like polished surface carefully with lens paper. The cover slip is also cleaned. The cover slip is placed over the counting surface prior to putting on the cell suspension. Charge the counting chamber by allowing a small drop of fluid to form at the tip of the pipette and gently bringing it into contact with the edge of the cover slip that is already placed on the chamber. 4. After charging the chamber, keep it in a moist petri dish for 20 to 30 minutes to allow platelets to settle down. Counting should be started before the fluid in the chamber starts drying up. Moistened filter paper or cotton retains evaporation of diluted specimen while standing. Note, if the mixture overflows into the moat or air bubbles occur, clean and dry the chambers, remix the contents of the pipette and refill both the chambers. 5. Mount the hemocytometer on the microscope and focus it first at 10x and then at 40x. The platelets are seen more easily if the condenser is lowered and the light decreased by adjusting the iris diaphragm. The platelets will appear as shiny retractile objects that darken when the fine adjustment knob is rotated. 6. If clumps or uneven distribution of platelets are observed in the counting chamber, the sample should be remixed and the chamber cleaned and refilled. If clumps are still present, a new sample must be obtained. Counting and calculations Counting and calculations are based on the dilution used. A. Counting method for 1 in 20 dilution. When the dilution is 1 in 20, the larger center square is used for RBC and platelet counts. This area is subdivided into 25 medium squares, which in turn are each divided into 16 squares. Of these, usually 5 squares, the 4 corner squares and the center square are used to perform RBC and platelet counts. B. If using 1 in 100 dilution, use the entire large center square to count the platelets. Platelets in all 25 squares within the large center square are counted. C. Count all the platelets lying within the selected squares and those touching the upper and right hand center lines. The platelets that touch the left hand and the bottom lines are not to be counted. Calculation. Let the number of the platelets counted be n. The formula for the platelet count per microliter of blood is N multiplied by dilution factor divided by volume of the fluid examined that is the area counted multiplied by the depth of the fluid. Example 1. Dilution used 1 in 20. 
area of five small squares counted is equal to five into one fifth millimeter multiplied by one fifth millimeter equal to point two square millimeters. Depth of the chamber is equal to point one millimeter. Therefore, the volume of the fluid in the five platelet squares is equal to point two square millimeter multiplied by point one millimeter equals to point zero two cubic millimeters. As n was the total number of platelets in five smaller squares, that is, in 0 0.02 cubic millimeters of diluted blood, then total number of platelets in one cubic millimeter of undiluted blood will be n multiplied by 20, that is, a dilution factor, divided by 0 0.02, which is equal to n multiplied by 20 multiplied by 100 divided by 2, which is equal to n into 1000. Example 2. Dilution used 1 in 100. If using whole of central square, then area of 25 small squares is equal to 25 multiplied by 1 fifth millimeter multiplied by 1 fifth millimeter is equal to 1 square millimeter. Depth of the chamber is equal to 0.1 mm. Therefore, volume of the fluid in the central square is equal to 1 square millimeter multiplied by 0.1 mm is equal to 0 0.10 cubic millimeter. As n was the total number of platelets in 25 smaller squares, that is in 0 0.10 cubic millimeter of diluted blood. Then total number of platelets in 1 cubic millimeter of undiluted blood will be n multiplied by 100, that is dilution factor, divided by 0.1, which is volume of fluid counted. This is equal to n multiplied by 10 multiplied by 100 divided by 1, which is equal to n multiplied by 1000. Thus, you will get total platelet count by multiplying the total number of platelets counted and multiplying it by 1000. Things to take care of to avoid error. 1. Platelet counts should be performed at the earliest. 2. If blood is collected by a skin puncture, carefully remove the first drop of blood and collect the free-flowing blood for the platelet count. This will minimize the occurrence of platelet clumping and adhesion of platelets to the puncture site. 3. If clumps of platelets are seen in the hemocytometer, the procedure should be repeated. Clumps may be due to inadequate mixing of blood or due to poor technique in obtaining the blood specimen. 4. A stained peripheral blood smear should be examined and the platelet estimate determined to confirm the hemocytometer platelet count. The platelet estimate should correlate with the platelet count.